Hello everybody and welcome to Archangelus Gaming. Archangelus here and welcome to Space Engineers. I thought to start off with Space Engineers I thought I'd show you a project that I was rather proud of. Um, I called it The Driller. Uh, I know, very simple name. It took me ages to complete this project. It was basically a, a test to see whether I could actually drill my way through a mountain. Fuel critical. Yeah, don't worry about that. I'm using dev commands to demonstration. And as you see, it is humongous. And basically, like I say, six months it took me in real time to drill through a mountain. Eight kilometers. And as you can see, as I fly through the driller, she is huge she is powerful she is colossal and a thing of pure beauty I apologize my polygon count on this map is so high that it's actually causing my computer to have a few glitches from time to time um, you know, it saves frequently because of it uh, as you can see, walking through the belly of the beast, you know, she is huge. Two refineries, just to be able to keep up with production demands of all of the assemblers that she has, and a means to be able to deposit to my main base on the other side of this mountain. And as you can tell from the camera angle, what I didn't take into account of was the curvature of the planet. Now because I'm playing on what they call a galaxy map, um, basically the planets are smaller than usual and I've ended up being at, I don't know, what's this, say 15 degrees angle and but I don't mind. When I bought her here I put on a few solar panels for you know to keep her powered just in case I'd ever use her again and I put in a system of gantries and things like that as if guests were able to come and see her as if she was like a, a museum piece as you can see from the drilling array it was it was able to rotate um, at quite a fair amount of revolutions per minute and at the same time craft from these welders its own um, tunnel from the materials that she assembled and I thought I'd show you her because she is my pride and joy now bring us back to the start menu um, I thought I would point out as it shows here, it's available on not just the play, uh, PC, but it's also on the PlayStation and on the Xbox. Um, second of all, I would I wanted to point out that there is far more than just planetary conquest. You know, you can actually explore the re regions of space. Well, I thought that might be a good change of pace for me, but. Let's start with character customization. Now, throughout the game, you can pick up certain bits of gear. So, completing like the tutorial missions and the scenarios will unlock certain pieces of gear as well. Um, all of this is purely cosmetic, and you can do just so much with it. Right. Let's start with helmets. Um, as you can see, I've picked up quite a few helmets. I mean, if I wanted to, I could create a character purely in leopard print. <laughs> I could do that if I wanted to. Or um, to show my, my pride. Yeah, let's go for something colourful. You know? 
So there is, like I say, there are options for all walks of life. Um, you know, so basically you can do whatever you want. You can be a soldier, you could be uh, some sort of next-gen explorer, you know, whatever. Me, I tend to go with the assault set because... I like the idea of having the the extra armor on my. Not sure why that didn't select, but uh, on my character. Um, let's see. What's the next? Yeah, where is it? I'm going to go f change my, uh, no, that's proper, that's next gen. We'll go for the next gen gear on this particular run through. If I can find it. And we'll do the same with our character. Just to be... Uh, next gen, yeah, next gen, there you go. There we go, next gen. So basically, theoretically, even, we won't lose our character in space. Right. Creating a new game couldn't be simpler. Like I say, plenty of scenarios to keep you going. First jump is really what it says. It's a storyline uh, scenario. Learning to survive extends on that. Never surrender absolutely brilliant you 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 get to space you create a um a, a weapons platform and you survive wave after wave after wave of drones that attack you and uh it, it, it was fun actually building this this huge uh weapons array and surviving uh lost colony Absolutely brilliant story-based uh, scenario with a few surprises on the way. Frostbite is a scenario I've never actually completed because of the fact that I always found it there was a glitch. Other people seem to have solved, you know, solved the entire scenario. Um, yeah, Deb, but uh, I've never been able to do it personally. Sparks of the Future was really more of a uh, an example of things you could do with the DLC that came out, and I've got all the DLCs for this game. Uh, Uranium Heist is more of a, a team versus team sort of a game. Never done it personally. And Scrap Race, again, is another sort of... Um, uh, player versus player sort of thing where you build like a vehicle and you race around a preset track and can be fun and especially considering some of the mechanics of this game um so yeah for the for this i'm gonna start from the beginning um well, let's do the first jump just to help you guys understand how this game works. And it's always nice occasionally to go back to the beginning. Yeah, and see where you've come from. So. Yeah. Ships also like approaching destination travel for a duration 576 hours. Alright, this is us. Alright, leave the cryo chamber, as it says in the top left corner. Okay. Let's switch to internal view. Uh, so first person view, sorry. Alright, it says use the wazard to move around. Use the mouse to look around. 
and follow the GPS for help. Oh, door, yeah. Interesting. <laughs> Access denied. Okay. Alright, so there's an airlock down there, but we've got to go to the bridge first. Okay, approaching the station. Now, apparently, the state, according to Goodbot on the left there, the station isn't responding to communications. Yeah, I think it's being attacked. That's why it's not responding to communications. Uh, you gonna stop the ship? No, you're just gonna ram us into it. Okay. Alright, so we've got to go to the airlock. Well, we saw the airlock down here. Uh, okay. Have to use time block oxy ch bottle. Trigger now. All right. So we have oxygen. Okay. So they're telling us to close our helmet, which is J, as you see on the bottom left. Yeah, we've um, got this little icon, I'm sure it represents a helmet. Okay. Okay, good bot said, proceed with caution. Falling off the station will result in a negative engineer performance report. Good bot. The station is reporting heavy damage to systems. Yeah, you just rammed into it. I'm saying that. I like the how they constructed this. I'm going to have to remember that. Alright, okay. So we, here we go. Station airlock. Alright, cool. Hey, we can go in. Alright. So, command center's up there. Uh, yeah, it does represent a stair. Let's see. I see. This was done just using the the stock components, no DLC. So, you know, a lot of the stairs that I would have in my in my builds are actually stairs, whereas this was just like a, a an angled grill, if you will. Oh, going to have to crouch underneath that door. Which is C, by the way, as you haven't seen in the top left. Oh, blimey. Huh? And we're back where we came from. 